but aren't you worried about the carcinogenic effects of red meat? Dude, no one ever got cancer eating a fucking grilled steak and roasted vegetables. Show me a study where they followed a control group for multiple years eating red meat in its whole food form, not between two buns on a cheeseburger from McDonald's with a Coke. Oh, and by the way, they also smoked and they also drank and they were 50 pounds overweight and they were said it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You're not going to get cancer eating steak, veggies, and potatoes. You're just not. The first sign that he has no idea what he's talking about is that he asked for a study in which the control group consists of people who are eating red meat solely in its whole food form to see whether or not that causes cancer. The control group in a trial would typically be the group without the intervention, or in other words, the group that didn't get the red meat. Second, if his bar for evidence here is a randomized controlled trial to assess whether a food increases cancer risk, then no foods or smoking or exercise for that matter cause or prevent cancer because none of them have been studied in that way. And this leads me to a critical point. By listing a bunch of variables like smoking, alcohol, weight, and lack of physical activity, he is suggesting that those variables impact cancer risk. But how does he know that? The evidence for those contributing to cancer risk is not unlike the research we have on red meat. It's largely in the form of prospective observational studies that adjust for confounding variables in a similar way that we see in the red meat literature. And this is outlined in the IARC monographs for red meat. And when the findings are consistent across studies done in different populations by different research groups at a given dose, we can be pretty confident in the results. Imagine if somebody claimed that being sedentary wouldn't increase your risk of cancer relative to being active because there's never been a study on a sedentary population where every single person ate strictly whole foods and avoided smoking and alcohol. I bet he wouldn't buy that. The fact of the matter is that just because something hasn't been studied in every imaginable context doesn't mean that it doesn't have the effect that we see in virtually every context it has been studied in. It would actually be more reasonable to say, I don't know if it has an effect in this context, rather than just claiming it doesn't have an effect at all because it hasn't been studied in that context. That's just ridiculous. And let's not forget that researchers are smart and aware of potential confounding, so they adjust for the variables that he mentioned. So when people try to claim that all these other variables explain the risk attributed to something that they like, like red meat. They can't have it both ways. They have to explain why that research meets some threshold that apparently the red meat research doesn't. If they can't, it suggests that they're holding a double standard and their views of the science on a given subject just shifts with their bias. So I suspect that Mr. Higher Up Wellness has just not really given this much thought.